now to absorb some local color through the magic of AM radio. Harkens me back to my youthful, careful days on the playgrounds of Forest Park School and my gifted days. And oh, what, you're gifted, all right. <laughs> what were you gifted at? Well, I guess there, I had some issues. Detention? There. Yeah. <laughs> when my dad told me I wouldn't plan on going to Harvard anytime real soon. <laughs> uh, you're going to have to get in touch with me. Uh, we're going to we're going to link all the volunteers via satellite cell phone so that we can put out the message immediately because you remember the problem we had in January. We had to have Governor Walker come in with the National Guard. It was horrible. Steve, listen to me. <laughs> Bring your own microphone because <laughs> you lost yeah. this one. Okay, Captain Ron, you've been doing this so well for the last few weeks. Uh, so go ahead and make my day. Oh, great one with the magic <laughs> pen. Oh, boy, he wants that microphone forever, doesn't he? <laughs> now you got to visualize it. We put a statue of Pete on this. Put him in with wearing like a hard hat and a flannel shirt, tool belt, snow shovel. You, know? you mean like from the village people? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. A couple. Now wait a minute yeah. here. <laughs> Good morning, Kenosha. This is Uncle Scotty Barter, and welcome to the all new Kenosha Day Weekly Report, coming to you live from Studio A here at WIP AM 1050 on your radio dial, streaming across the very frozen cornfields of the Midwest, reaching out to over 49,999 homes here in the Tri County area. Apparently, Ray Meisner moved out of town. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, being brought to you this morning by the Boathouse Pub and Eatery, Casey Family Options, and a host of other very fine local businesses. And joining us here in our Kenosha Today Trolley Barn, the chairman of the board for Fat Tuesday, the big dog, little Stevie Casey, is here in our Trolley Barn this morning. Good morning, Kenosha. I'm uh, back. Uh, uh, three Saturdays in a row, healthy. Wait a minute, three. This uh, is, is it two or two, three in a row? Two. Might be two. Let's still, still losing weight and yeah. ready to have yeah. some fun. Ka- uh, Cal Ripton's. Um, record is pretty much still intact. Yeah, okay, there we go, there we go. <laughs> also joining us this uh, morning, our video coordinator, Channel 14's Volunteer of the Year, Captain Ronnie Motorspeck, joins us here at Camp Happy Face. How yeah, are you, Captain Ron? I'm good. Volunteer of the yeah. Year, that's special. Oh, he's he's very he's special. He's very special. <laughs> and engineering the Kenosha Today train wreck, uh, six-time WLIP Employee of the Month and former uh, story writer for Brian Williams, uh, Pistol Pete Surgeon is here. <laughs> yeah, he didn't get in trouble with mine either, yeah. <laughs> Radio. God, that's going to break down a lot of walls. You're not supposed to say God on the radio. Why the hell not? You're not supposed to say hell either. This is going to be a barren source of amusement. <laughs> this is can why say, we do disclaimers. Yeah, can, you, can you say crap on the radio? Yeah. <laughs> so for those who haven't heard, uh, we are now here every each and every uh, Saturday morning from 10 to noon, bringing you two hours of Rock'em, yeah, you know, I got to tell you, that, that, that's a little bit of a stretch. Two hours is a little bit of a stretch. I get, I get bored with you after about an hour and fifteen minutes. <laughs> that sounds like my Valentine's Day, <laughs> which, which, by the way, we're going to talk a little bit more about. But uh, yeah, well, we'll see if she calls in. Uh, she was due She's back probably at probably still full from her meal. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know her, and her, it begins her six her six ounce fillet. And well, her two ounce, uh, two ounce lobster tail. I, I, had, I had to feed Honey, this. Honey, I gal. love you. I love you so much. I'm going to get you a six I, ounce fillet. I had to feed this gal quick and get her out because her leg monitor was going off, and she had to be back to the <laughs> jail by nine o'clock. Well, she didn't have to. She didn't have to take time to digest the meal. That's for darn sure. <laughs> However, uh, we are expanding our horizons, and now that Brian Williams is in early retirement, we are now the watchdogs of our community. And considered by many to have taken journalism to an all-time high. I went to the Brian Williams School of Broadcasting here. Yes. That's, that's <laughs> <laughs> Being uh, the leaders of the mainstream media and watchdogs of community, here it is, backed by popular demand and public outcry, uh, little Stevie's promo of the week. Here's the, uh, here you go, Pete. Just shake your thing, let me see you move. Now spin around and feel the groove. Yeah. Let's try it. Trying to build up again. I love you so. I don't even know what the hell that is. What is that? <laughs> Hampton and the Hamsters. Everybody knows that. You know, did you did you come up with this at the production meeting? It was kind of at the end of the production was, meeting. I was going to say at the very end. <laughs> I was on my way into you know, the parking lot. <laughs> I've, been, I, I've been kind of missing your phone calls the last uh, couple of Friday nights. Steve, <laughs> this this is Scott. I have I didn't see you at the production meeting. <laughs> Hey, hey, Steve, do my shout-outs because they're probably sick of listening. i got to oh, give a couple that, of shout-outs. They're gonna, because they're no doubt they're going to tune us off after the first 10 minutes. Jerry in Lubbock, Texas. <laughs> Lubbock, Texas. We're, being, uh, we're being, being broadcast in Lubbock, Texas. And uh, Bob in Warwick, Rhode Island. I love Rhode Island. Thank you. I spent a wonderful weekend in uh, Newport, Rhode Island. 
landed in Providence and went to a bed and breakfast with my wife and ate uh, ate a lobster. It was actually about a 13 <laughs> ounce here, here lobster, <laughs> you know, as opposed to what you serve on Valentine's Day. You're uh, Three ounce uh, shrimp lobster fillet. Hey, I took a gal uh, to Simmons Island uh, one time, and we spent the weekend there. And uh, you know, I don't want to let a gal uh, think that I've got to come across every single date. You know, with my A game. I mean, <laughs> well, thank goodness. Put them in a lap you know, of luxury. Because, because if last Saturday night your Valentine's Day dinner was your A game. <laughs> Let's, Let's take this call first, and then we'll go to our promo. Surely. Oh, no, you got one more. No, no, that's it. That's oh, just it. Joe in Lubbock, Texas. No, and uh, Jerry in oh, Warwick, Jerry. Rhode Island. Oh, oh, oh okay. Buddy, buddy. Good morning, Shirley. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> I'm glad you're back again, Steve. How are you? But I'm more concerned about you. How are you feeling? Well, knock on wood, I'm a little better. Okay. What, what, what's that knock on wood? What does that all entail? Well, that's knock on my head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> good luck. I, now, made a, I had a call quick because I got a cherry pie in the oven. Ooh. You're killing me. You're killing me. <laughs> you can't eat it sure. yet, right? No, well, actually, I've been uh, I've been eating a little bit, but I'm still, uh, the weight's staying off, and I've lost another couple of pounds, so that's a good thing. Well, good for yeah. you. Now, am I going to see you at the grocery store tomorrow morning? I doubt it. Not yet. Okay. Okay. Uh-huh. So when you, what do you do to occupy your time while the uh, pie's in the oven? You down a <laughs> bottle of Muscatel or the Moscata or whatever it is? Yeah. Rum shot. Rum shot. Yeah. yeah. And now, listening to all the fine shows on WLAP. Oh, there you go. There so what you are you go. calling us for? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now, now, Shirley, who did you make the pie for? My husband and my, my family. Oh, how nice. Now, my wife made this week turkey pot pie. Oh. That's yeah. locale, isn't it? A whole, whole big turkey pot pie. It was fabulous. I made a turkey breast earlier in the week, and uh-huh. we had some leftover, and she made uh, turkey pot pie. It was I, I love pot pies, but they've got to be homemade. You know right. what I mean? They got to be homemade. I love pot pies yeah. too. Chicken or turkey or fish. Yeah, no, or it was it was turkey. Okay. You know, one of the things. Now here, I, now we're going to talk a little bit about food. The biggest <laughs> thing that people do is they always overcook turkey and they overcook pork. You don't need to overcook those things. All right. You know, my turkey breast that I cooked, okay. I I, co- I I turned on at about four hundred and fifty degrees for Ooh. about half an hour. Then I turned it down to three fifty and oh, finished it I'm starting it off. to sweat. <laughs> mm. Hey Shirley, we got a I got a question to ask you. Now that our casino is uh, uh, been kicked to the curb, yeah, right. Name a song that you think of. Uh, or we're actually we're gonna play a song that best fits Governor Scott Walker and oh, his presidential a, run. Yeah, and, a, and a if you get in the road. <laughs> well, that might be better than what we're wondering. <laughs> Shirley, That's my yeah, pick. I yeah but it. I don't have it queued up. So. Shirley, I hate to I hate to bring this up again, but what did I what did I say two years ago? I said that he would never approve the casino, and do you know why? This is the only reason he didn't approve it. His father is a Baptist minister. Yeah. Oh, the, didn't 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 want to disappoint Daddy. The couple million that the Potawatomi's game didn't have nothing. To do well, that had something to do with it oh, too. Yeah, but yeah. I'm <laughs> telling you, it was his upbringing. He's against gambling. Period. That's oh, the end of story. Oh, okay, Shirley. Why did he have to drag it on so long? That's what I. That, well, I, I, it, it, it's just terrible. All right, Shirley. Now here's the song. If you guess this, we still have a box of uh, Valentine's <laughs> chocolates from uh, February 14, 2008. That are <laughs> that it's going to be yours. I'll hand deliver them if you can name <laughs> this tune. Go ahead, Pete. This is Governor Scott Walker. The Great Pretenders. Oh. Oh, she got it right. Oh, my goodness. Oh, look out. Congratulations. We got a box of chocolate you can share with your family with the cherry pie. Oh, great. I love that song. I just love it. Well. So I got it. There you go. You got it, honey. Uh And, and, uh. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> that's our uh that's our studio that's audience, studio audience. Yeah, yeah, yeah right well we'll get this right <laughs> out to you um, but uh dead skunk in the middle of the road that was our probably our second choice but yeah uh, I, that fits him right yeah. <laughs> well what can i say now can i pick you up anything at the piggly wiggly tomorrow shirley <laughs> Oh, no, that, thank of... you, honey. Anyhow, but... now you know our other favorite listener, Dale. He goes in for his knee surgery on Tuesday. Uh, I heard that. Yeah, on Tuesday. So we're gonna can can your son come out to the seventeenth district and fill in for the shoveling <laughs> if uh, we get another inch of snow? <laughs> I don't know. I can't say for him. <laughs> okay. Well, I wish I was able. I would do it. You would. I would if I was able. Well, you can ride along in the in the uh, yeah. in the SUV with me. You can you can drive the SUV as yeah. long as you don't. Oh, there you go. That's oh, yeah. Lay off the Muscatel. 
Uh, We've got a bright yellow Hummer that we take out to the 17th district. Oh wow! Okay. And that's kind I of. I thought a, there was already one of those of, out there. That's, <laughs> <laughs> Surely we got to oh, move on. Oh boy, guys. that's some, that's somehow Love appropriate. Uh, we got to move on, baby. All right. Thanks. Now wait a minute. Now can I can I read a brand new sponsor yeah, that we have? Yeah, just a second. Or? Okay. We got with Shirley. I just wanted, would like to say coming up after 11 o'clock break, we have our Kenosha today top 10 list, and after Stevie's. Uh, should we take this call first? Do you want to get this? Disclaimer? Take the call, sure. Right, take right. the call. Always take the call. Go, go, good morning. You're on Kenosha today. Yeah. Is this the SSPR show? SSPR so- What's show? That? What's that mean? Yeah, Scott, Steve, Pete, and Ron. Oh, SSPR right. show. Like no, this is Duck Dynasty. What who's, do you want? Who's this? <laughs> Duck Dynasty. <laughs> uh, Dale from Kenosha. Oh, oh. Hey, Dale, I, uh, you're having surgery on Tuesday, huh? Yeah, I heard you talk to my wife this morning. She say anything good about me? Well, <laughs> she she said, couldn't recall Dale she was. Said, <laughs> yeah, she, she kind of was making fun of me. She said, I can't believe he's been calling in for that many months, and you never knew who he was. <laughs> I mean, Dale and I, I'm not going to mention your last name, but you and I go back to the, uh, I think, the 70s, the late 70s. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I used to... Uh, I used to be be working in a warehouse, and and you were a truck driver, and you'd uh, you'd come in, and you'd never help me unload the truck. Was that a union thing oh, or no? no? I, had, I, I had to watch you. You know, I had to make sure you stayed in shape. Yeah. Oh, well, how's that working out for you? Well, and before <laughs> and before I knew you, I I'm knew. I'm more entertaining in the weight now. There you go. I sit around watching. And and before that, I knew your father. Your father was a great man. I, I liked. Yeah, uh, I was. Liked yeah. Uh, liked him very much. Greatly missed. Well, you're going to be on the DL for a while, so we have to replace you, and obviously Shirley's not going to be much help. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I heard that. <laughs> uh, we'll have to. Uh, but anyway, yeah. I'd like you guys know I'm just leaving the 17th now. I, I went up on the uh, top of the school to make sure that the uh, <laughs> snowflake uh, light was working, so when it does start to snow again, it, you know, that's their beacon for help. Dale, okay. I would expect nothing less from you. Yes. I mean, right up until the day you go into the hospital, you're mm-hmm. thinking of uh, the alderman of the 17th district giving and his hun- people. Giving 110%. That's what Absolutely. you'd like. Yeah, I'm, just glad, I'm just glad I found the escalator uh, ladder, you know. I mean, it made it a lot easier to get up there and down again. Yeah. Hey, well, don't fall because the paperwork's going to really... Uh Kill us if it, we got it. Now, do we still stuff. have do we still have the snow shovel stands out there that the, that that you and I set up a few months ago? Yeah, they were still there. They're and, still there. Uh, okay, and, and and gratefully they're not uh, covered in snow. Okay, yet. well, and and just so you know, Dale and and everybody out there, the shovels are free. They were donated by the by the Kenosha Today Radio version, and you know anybody needs a shovel out in the Seventeenth District when we get that other half of inch of snow coming this weekend. Well, you know, you get a half inch of snow, and it's like they. They lose sight of the shovels. They can't find them. I don't know why. Well, yeah. I'll be out there. I'm out there every time it snows. Like Stevie said, we donated those shovels because uh, nobody shovels it better than we because do. Because the last thing we want <laughs> in the 17th district is for those roads to be impassable. impassable. Right, right. <laughs> All right. Uh, well. You guys have yourself a great day, a uh, great show, and uh, I'll be listening throughout. Okay, All right, good Dale, luck. we'll be Call thinking us. of you next yeah. week. I hope everything goes okay. Okay, thank you much. All righty. All right. Stevie, you ready for your promo? I, I got okay. a brand new sponsor, okay. and I, I can't help. We were talking mm. to Shirley about the Valentine's Day and what a wonderful meal you prepared for your honey last <laughs> week on Valentine's Day. And, Hit that blip button. Dude. And out of that, uh, <laughs> out of that, uh, and of course, for the listeners who don't realize it, you went out and you splurged. You bought yourself a four-ounce steak fillet and a two-ounce lobster tail. So uh, we've got a brand new sponsor, the Morsel Steak Company. <laughs> <laughs> the Morsel Steak Company can make your special event really mean nothing. They will deliver to your door a prime grade A three ounce steak morsel that says, "Here's dinner, but you're not that important." Why spend? <laughs> why spend ten or eleven dollars for a real steak when you can have the same for just a fraction of the price? That's right, folks. <laughs> for only two dollars and ninety nine cents. The Morsel Steak Company will deliver that special meal that says exactly what you feel. It's especially appropriate for those unwanted visits from the in-laws, ex-wives, or any number of Kenosha aldermen. Tell them exactly what you think of them. Serve Morsel Steaks at your next dinner party and never see those people again. And if you order today, they'll include a two-ounce lobster tail, just like served at Barter Manor last week, and a two-ounce lobster tail so small... It will actually get lost dipping it in the butter. Folks, why spend more? <laughs> Tell them exactly how little they mean to you. <laughs> Order today from the Morsel Steak Company or visit them online at www. 
dot morsel steaks for cheapskates <laughs> dot com. Hey, you know the beauty of this is I convinced this gal to stay overnight. And so, she, well, buy the bigger and tire what, with duct tape. But what, what'd you serve her for breakfast? A egg and a half a piece of toast. You know that's what she says. She gets up and says, "What's for breakfast?" I goes, "Well, of course, leftovers." <laughs> what do you want? What do you want? Now I got to tell you. Now, now we're bringing on a brand new two-hour sponsor, the House of Gerhards, yes. and that's where I went for Valentine's Day last. Uh, and I had a real steak. They told me I had a real steak. They told me the steak you had, the tail is still wagging. Well, I got to tell you, I ordered the strip steak and I brought home about three quarters of it because I still can't eat like I used to. But it was, it was covered with gorgonzola cheese and mushrooms on the top. That's how I always request it. The only thing I didn't order, and this is my standard meal at House of Gerhardt's, mm -hmm. steak, baked French onion soup, Thousand Island dressing on the salad, and a baked potato. But I, I didn't, I didn't order the baked French onion soup. I thought it might be too greasy for me because the... gassy. 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 Yeah, yeah. yeah gassy, well, gassy. And I'm, I'm sure all the patrons but, in the restaurant uh, I think, appreciated uh, it. <laughs> well, based on the size of the steak at Gerhard's, you could have had a dinner party for 15. <laughs> <laughs> could have had them all for three three nights. <laughs> I mean, seriously, when you cook the steak, how big was it? It had to have been about the size of a ping pong. Ping pong ball. Well, it shriveled up a little bit. <laughs> the steak, that was. The steak. The steak. <laughs> the steak. I said, now, what are we talking about? <laughs> are we still talking about the meal? Hey, let me finish this. There's more good news, boys and girls. Tomorrow at noon, each and every Sunday, you can tune in here at WIP AM 15, 10, 10, 50. Now, come on. I'm trying to be serious. I got to get through this. You can watch the replay or listen to the replay. Yeah, watch, watch the replay the on radio. There you can go. look at your speaker, though. We're very handsome that way. And then uh, you can watch the replay <laughs> they of must this. They must like us. Finally tuned, professionally produced debacle on Time Warner Cable's Channel 14, Tuesdays at 5, Wednesdays at 6 p.m. and Sundays at 6 p.m. Now, I got to tell you, they probably keep having us back because we write the check every week. And I just got to ask again, I haven't asked for a while. And the people are telling me that this uh, this joke gets old, but it never gets old in my mind because he's one of my favorite former aldermen. <laughs> the guy the guy before us, uh, from what I understand, didn't write the check and was abruptly taken off the air. But uh, Scott, and, and we're honest, this is paid broadcasting. You know, of course, you know, I'm a little miffed at what Carl sent me in the mail this week. He's actually paying me now to be here. Did did you get the same check in the mail or not? Carl, the Carl Wurz, Wurzliger, Wurzler, 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 yeah. I mean, the guy that the big he sent me a check and from, said, "Here's your from Dippity Doo." Is it a bo did, was did it a bonus check yesterday. or are they paying me now? I don't know. It was a rather sizable check. <laughs> oh, well, all right. To, do you want to uh, drop? Well, anyways, I, I guess I, I guess I have to. I guess I have to ask. <laughs> did you write the check, Pete? Did we? I I hope so. We're here, so. I but I have you, well you what have I have I yeah I have a musical uh, interpretation of what happened to the other show. You guys, you want to hear this? Some oh of yeah, yeah I, I would love to hear it. Here we go. Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty together again. Well, and that, yeah, was that was it. That was that. Pretty much. That. Well, Never he didn't write the check. Brain. He didn't write the check. Never gets old. He would show up with his badge. But not his check. Well, do you get through security here, my guy? Well, you gotta have a badge. It's a it's a high tech security out here. Yeah, yeah. Well, that carrying a badge as an alderman, a, a federally elected alderman. That's true. You know, he uh, he can get in a, a, a alderman can get into different political events and p bypass security and things like that. In fact, when you when you fly, if you have an aldermanic badge, you don't even have to go through a. Uh, through uh, scanning, practice? through scanning, they don't even scan you. Oh. Alderman, Alderman coming through. Alderman, he's got a badge. Let him, <laughs> let him right through. Should we read a sponsor? <laughs> I don't really care. I'm having too much fun. Well, then we'll. <laughs> yeah, read a sponsor. Right, read big... a sponsor. <laughs> Worth a Girl Scout cookies from my niece Audrey and my other niece let, Sophie. Let me ask my my partners here, Pete and Ron. How many cookies did we end up with down here last year? I think I brought you a box. Didn't I bring oh, you a box? You might have brought a box. I don't well, I seem I to remember don't... something about a box. The leftover. Yeah, I brought right. the box. But I, I think it was like the. the I think as of when, yeah. when if well, somebody knows when, uh, if somebody knows when the Girl Scout cookies are are coming out, let me know because I, I bought, uh, like I said, a hundred dollars split evenly between Sophie and Audrey, and then Emily uh, down the street, my neighbor, uh, who who we've known that family for a long time. I think I bought another half a dozen boxes. I could I could probably buy a box and have those over to Barter Manor for my well, next, I'll day, have to my ask. next evening dinner party. Yeah, dessert. <laughs> dessert? Here, honey, here's a cookie <laughs> to go with your two ounce filet and your uh, four ounce lobster. Yeah, Don't but get the, no crumbs but, on the floor. But, but the shot glass of coffee really is a nice touch. Yeah. Small Valentine's Day, I know they were in the kitchen cooking, and uh, from time to time, I've been known to 
parade into the kitchen with a couple of shots of Jägermeister and do a shot with Kyle and uh, and Dick in the kitchen while they're cooking. Of course, my wife thinks I get up to go to the bathroom, but I go to the bar and grab a couple of shots and go into the kitchen. Well, thank God but you I didn't, didn't release yeah, that. Well, I didn't do that because no, no. I'm you know I've been been alcohol free or tried try to have been. I had a couple of drinks this week and I had a Me glass too. of wine with uh, with dinner. You know, so that's it. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. I got nothing else. That's it. <laughs> okay, I'm about bringing your A game. I'm going to let you go. Well, I have to apologize because I didn't take my shot of Jägermeister into the kitchen, so I'll have to do that. Do it twice next time. But my, it's not real water. There's a bladder and it's air injected, and you flush that toilet, and you better not be sitting on it because it'll, you know. Hey, you know what? Is this something I should entertain of purchasing and putting it over at Barter Manor? Because obviously you're claiming that uh, my dinner parties aren't uh, flush. <laughs> Maybe I could uh, <laughs> impress her with this, huh? Not enough food to use. Isn't that enough? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say there's really not n- enough of a meal to even have to use the. So bathroom. you won't have to use the plunger then. I can put that away. <laughs> you can put the plunger away. <laughs> Some of the topics we want to talk about when we get back of the break. Uh, obviously, the casino. We is, got nothing. Uh, why, why kid? Why kid the public and say we've got things we well, should we talk don't. about? And you know the Menominee's and here's they got a new one. They're thinking of suing because a uh, strong argument of contesting um, constitutionality, and then they want to plant pot. We got to. Is about it that. over yet or not? Is what the whole casino thing? Is yeah, it over? it's, it's over. Yeah, let's take a call and then we'll go take a break. Okay. Good morning, you're on Kenosha today. Is this little BB my little sweet Scotty? <laughs> it depends. This, this is so clean. Oh, jeez. I was just driving to meet my girlfriends for some Bloody Marys, and I heard your sweet voice, and I had to call in. You said you were going to call me back, and you never did. I, I, I got busy. Yeah, well, th- so these guys know this is my uh, date. Uh, what would you say your name was again? <laughs> <laughs> From Saturday. And now, now be honest and explain to the boys here uh, what a good time you had. Well, I did have a good time, but I was a little hungry when I left. Um, <laughs> you know, we, we had met earlier, and, you know, we, we met for a cocktail, and he said, why don't you come on over? I'm going to make you dinner. And I was so excited. I was so happy. I was happier than a tick on a dog. And I said, well, of course I will, sweetheart. <laughs> well, honey, so, next time, wait, wait, let her go. go ahead. Keep going. I, I got there. And he met me at the door, and he had this cute little apron on, and he said, Come on in, sweetie. I got some appetizers for you. So, of course, he had my favorite. We had some little mini Ritz bits with the cheese Whiz in a can, and <laughs> we had little Moby David, and I said, This man is something else. Oh, he's a, <laughs> he, he's a, he's a romantic. Oh, oh, get to the God. good part. Yeah, keep going. Well, then... He had the, the house, oh, he had the table set so nice. We had little TV, wobbly TV trays in front of the fireplace with some folding chairs. And he had some real pretty, you know, Valentine paper napkins and okay. some real pretty little paper plates. But they had little hearts on them. And I'll tell you what, I was so excited. I couldn't wait for the main course. And really, um, those little hockey pucks, I was a little disappointed. <laughs> But it was okay because I mean they they it it would just steal you right out. All right, now I got a quick question for you. I got to ask, and it's it's something that you said at the beginning. You said he answered the door in an apron. Was he wearing anything else? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, he had a turtleneck on, but I really didn't pay a whole lot of attention because I kept looking in them pretty eyes of his, and that just took my breath away. Uh, who, so who, really who the hell are we talking were about? You in the right house? <laughs> yeah. Who the hell are we talking about now? That's my little BB. We had little pet names. We thought little pet names for each other. He's BB for Barnack Barter, and I'm little Suey P. And I don't really know why he's calling me that, but he had such a twinkle when he told me. I just said, okay, honey, you can call me whatever you want. Now, wasn't that the greatest time you ever had? That was definitely one of them, yes. Well, <laughs> I, I must say. The second one was leaving. Listen, and I tell you what. All of me, what was that? Does it, is, is, well, uh, my friend Ryan says the second one was leaving. You'd come back well, again, wouldn't yeah, you? Yeah, that was kind of a good thing, too. But, you know, you said you were going to call me. You never called me. I left a message. Oh, that was you? I said it was a collect call from the jail. I didn't know that was you, honey. <laughs> well, so I just I just heard that voice. I said I have to call in because, as I said, I'm going on to meet my girlfriends for some Bloody Mary. So maybe later on we can hook up and I can bring the food this time. How's that? I would recommend you bring the food this time. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, I'm glad okay. you had All right, honey. Well, I'll let you go, and you have all fun, and I'll talk to you soon, I hope. Okay, sweetheart. Thank you. Okay. Bye, <laughs> Bye. honey. <laughs> I have heard everything. <laughs> Wow, look at the time. Yeah, look at the time. <laughs> Is it away. noon already? <laughs> I got to go. All right, we'll be back in one minute after the, what do we got, the weather, right? Uh, promo and weather. That's promo it. and weather. We'll, we'll be, be right back. back yeah. uh, you've just tuned in. This is Uncle Scotty Barter, and welcome to the Kenosha Today Weekly Report, coming to you live from Studio A here at WIP AM 1050 on your dial. Brought to you by the Boathouse Pub and Eatery, Casey Family Options, and a host of many other very fine local businesses. Joining us this morning, appearing very well healed uh, from his illness, the big dog, Mr. Warmth. Little Stevie Casey returns. Uh, well, I'm warm. I'm warm this week. I'm wearing my boots. I was I was here last week, and my feet got so damp. I thought my toes were going to fall off. Oh, isn't that special? <laughs> yeah. You know, I got to tell you, my feet. Uh, well, we talked about this last week. My feet get cold now all hey, the time since I got out of toes. The hospital. We're having uh, broiled toes tonight at Barter Manor for the main course. Broiled toes. <laughs> you know, you can turn anything into something stupid. <laughs> Hey, this is my love life you're talking about. Oh, that's your love life yeah. already. Here we go. Okay. Also, yeah. <laughs> our video coordinator, Channel 14's Volunteer of the Year, Captain Ronnie Mutterspike, is here this morning at Camp Happy Face, spreading whatever it is he's spreading, and uh, engineering the Kenosha State train wreck. The only reporter to have actually captured Governor Scott Walker's now infamous hell no speech from this past Tuesday's press conference. Pistol Pete Surgeon is here, who appears to be alert and in full control. I find that this is highly affiligent and edumacationist <laughs> for my brain, because... I'm smart, boy. Now that's a reporter. That's a reporter. <laughs> yeah. Was that the was that the governor talking, or was that <laughs> you reporting? On him? It could be whoever you want. <laughs> For those of you who missed it, the Kenosha Today Show has been extended one hour. It's now airing from 10 a.m. till noon every Saturday. And yeah, get a load of that. And so now instead of only one hour show about nothing, you get uh, two hours of uh, show completely about nothing. And now that Brian Wilms is in early retirement. Uh, little Stevie and I, myself, are being considered by many as the heir to serious journalism, as you can yeah, tell. We're going to try to get Brian Williams on as a guest next Saturday. Okay. I've been in contact with him. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> uh, for all, for those uh, that are out listening uh, and have a need to, uh, to record this, this is being recorded oh, for training I forgot to, yeah, yeah, I forgot to tur- <clears throat> have everybody turn their tape recorder on. Yeah, so in the event, you need to t- take this down to the for Kenosha News Reporter for whatever, and uh, so now that it's a two-hour show, we'll give you. Yeah, a you break, know what? A I love minutes. this. Yeah. So, so during the eleven o'clock break, we'll give them a little time uh, to, to flip the tape. Yeah, yeah right, to flip yeah. the tape. You know, you, here you file an ethics complaint. It makes the Kenosha News, yeah. and of course, they drag my name into it. What the hell do I got to do with this? <laughs> Who's, whose name? Well, well, the original ethics. Oh, oh you yeah. Know, uh, 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 Scott Barter. Uh, uh, you've got a. What kind of memory do you have? You have a photogen. No, no. You photogenic have a, manner. Photogenic. Yeah, it's a little fuzzy at times. Yeah, it's a little fuzzy at times. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> And by the way, uh, speaking of the ethics board, they are meeting. Here's the agenda. They are meeting Monday at 4 o'clock. You have the agenda? Right here. Let me see it. We think we make stuff up here? <laughs> no, Brian, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. I feel and, like, and I I feel like a, we better be uh, oh, covering here we go. ourselves here. Closed and, session. The ethics board may go into closed may session. May go into closed session. Uh, to investigate possible probable cause sufficiency Finding against Alderman G. John Ruffalo. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Due to the graphic nature of this program, viewer discretion is advised. Proceed, sir. <laughs> and the ethics board may go into closed session pursuant to so-and-so Wisconsin statute to review the investigation plan regarding probable cause sufficiency against Alderman David Bogdala. And? Wow, that's on, uh, that's Monday. Uh, for anybody interested, February 23rd, 2015 at 4 o'clock p.m. But the, the Kenosha News last Sunday in their Laurel and Darts, they gave uh, Laurel to... Hardy? Uh, <laughs> they, they gave a Laurel to Hardy. Hardy boy. Uh, It'd be more spe- relevant than speaking Laurel of, and Darts, yeah. Speaking of Laurel and Hardy. Uh, to Alderman Begdala for asking Kenosha County District Attorney to investigate the city's ethics board. And it says, uh, too often the board meets behind closed doors. Here's frivolous complaints, including one accusing the dollar of having poor attendance at committee meetings. Okay, here's the deal. Mm. You want to hear the deal? Yeah. I don't care. What's happening with him filing a complaint against the Ethics Committee is nothing more than misdirection. It's the oldest political. These guys, uh, you know, uh, have been, have been pl- reading out of the same playbook for five or six years now. I can predict them like, like the sun coming up in the morning. This is a misdirection. Okay, he's get he's had a complaint filed against him because of his attendance. So you know what, na 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 boo boo. We're going to find something else to misdirect and talk about something else. So we'll file a complaint against the ethics committee. And Scott, what it comes down to is one thing, and this is all seriousness 
okay. All, all joking aside, two questions you got to ask yourself is, did he miss the meetings? Yes, right. they missed the meetings. Yes or no? Yes or no? Yeah. Yes, they missed <clears throat> the meetings. And number two, did they call the committee chairman or the mayor in advance of missing the meetings? The answer is no. So it's a, it's a, it's a, the case is over for heaven's sakes. They missed the meetings and they did not ask to be excused, which is what the ordinance calls for. Isn't that correct? Yeah. It's okay. mandatory. So that, there you go. Now, the only thing in question is what the ethics committee is going to do to them. They have, they can do nothing but find them guilty because the ordinance reads, you know, if you miss a meeting, did they, did you miss a meeting? Yes or no. Did you have permission to miss a meeting? And that's an email or a text yeah. message or something just saying that I have to work. No, they didn't do that. Done. They're guilty. You know, one of the, all there is to it. One of the items or the issues that had come up was did they intentionally miss the meetings? Well, well what I do you mean say, intentionally? Well, that's what the, that's what I was asked, and and I said, uh, I said, let's suppose at a moment somebody gets an alternate side parking ticket. Well, I go back to the municipal court and say I didn't intentionally mean to park on the wrong side of the road, but the ordinance says I get a I get a ticket, right? Right. So there, what's this, what's it's a done issue? And if this um, ordinance that's specifically designed to address uh, aldermen's duties and responsibilities, if they're saying nothing, well, then they're just telling everybody, now, well, you don't have to buy. Now, now, and I, and I always, whenever we talk about attendance and ethics and things like this, I always point out, because I've never hidden behind this, had the worst attendance record in 22 years. Did I mention I was an alderman for 22 years? Forward with Casey. Forward Forward with, with, did, I mention, everything in did I mention that I was there for 22 years? Had a horrible attendance record. I'm running a small business. My obligation was to my families that I serve. My wife was diagnosed with a terrible, terrible illness. I spent a lot of time at home. I'll be the first one to admit that I missed the meetings. At the time, there wasn't legislation or an ethics committee put in place to address those issues. And I, I, I half think that based on my attendance record is why the ethics committee and everybody else was formed. But it's very clear cut now. It's very clear cut. Did you miss the meetings, yes or no? Yes, I missed the meetings. Did you ask for permission to miss the meetings? Were you excused? Yes or no? And if the question is no, you're guilty. Suppose for the moment that all 17 aldermen decide to take a hike. Well, they can certainly do that. The may Well, it, it, with nobody, you know what, if all 17 aldermen says, I'm not attending any meetings anymore, well, the city comes to a standstill. The city comes to a Now, the, the, the mayor can issue warrants for all of those aldermen, and the police department can go and physically bring you to the meeting to form a quorum. A lot of people yeah. don't understand yeah. that. So if there was a voting block of, let's say, eight or nine guys who didn't want to, who wanted to prove a point and bring the city to a screeching halt, they could just avoid the meetings, kind of like Wirch and all those guys did a few years ago when they, when they fled to Illinois yeah. to try to stop business <clears throat> from being conducted. So as long as you're within the jurisdiction and was within Wisconsin, they can drag you back to the meeting. So the and that's what the mayor has the opportunity to do that if he chooses to. We're pretty safe here, right? They can't come and arrest us for anything, can they? Well, do we have an attendance record here on uh, Kenosha today? We're no, not. we're too lazy to keep track of it. We <laughs> don't even remember how many weeks you've been back now. That's paperwork. Yeah. And, I mean, we're not, you know, we just make it up. You well, it's, this is such a clear-cut thing. Did they miss the meetings? Yes. Did they ask for permission to miss the meetings? No. So you're guilty. The only thing in question at this point in my mind is what the ethics committee is going to do to them. Now, let me, let me ask, can I play devil's advocate for a second? Because sure. Alderman Bogdala is making the argument that his attendance record overall is pretty good. In fact, it's probably in the 95 percentile range. Do you think that he should, that should be taken into consideration with the case? No, that's not an issue in this case. The issue in this case is the 17 meetings for his committee meetings. There was no complaint an issue with his uh, other yeah there was no there was no complaint based and, and, and why would alderman bagdala miss the city council meeting there are cameras at the city council meetings <laughs> boy the vein is coming you know well, well, <laughs> you know well, wherever there's a camera these yahoos are going to show up Ooh, but of course God. there are no cameras at committee meetings so why show up how about this nana nana boo boo and yahoo boy that's a, it's a three weeks stay in the hospital <laughs> nana nana boo boo i feel so dirty now all of a sudden what am i, what am hey, I doing but, you know people brought this uh, being the the uh, WIP master at news reporting. Mm -hmm. Here was a case where a member of Canada's parliament got caught with his pants down. Uh, he was, they had to have a procedural vote, apparently. And so he didn't want to vote like these guys didn't, and like the words and those guys said. So he, his reason was his underwear was too small, right? That's, that's, that's his, correct. His underwear was too he, small. So he, he takes off and, and gets an excuse. He, 
<laughs> I'm serious. I'm reading right this. I can't make this stuff you up. You know what? I'm this really, is a Canadian uh, parliament. You know, yeah. Canadian parliament. You know, uh, <laughs> uh, it's this never ceases to amaze me. I'm trying to talk about something serious, and here we got Barter over here bringing up underwear of a Canadian <laughs> parliamentarian. I'm trying to make a point here. Oh, you made a point, all right. <laughs> Maybe I'll have this guy. So, over so it, was he excused to? Go buy a bigger pair of briefs. So what happened was yeah. is that he uh, he had left the room during a vote, which is apparently against procedure, and the opposition party uh, said, hey, your vote shouldn't count, and that's when he stood up and said, yeah, well, you know, my underwear was too tight, and that's why I had to go take care of it, and everybody laughed and guffawed and whatever all else. Guff- and, uh, they yeah. laughed and what? I don't know. They laughed. Just going to stick with laughing. Wait, wait, you, know? you say guffaw? Guffawed. Well, that, that, Guffawed? Trump, that trumps nana nana wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> trumps that. What the hell does guffawed mean? <laughs> You kind of, you know, you kind of chuckle at something. You know? Now you're highly edumacated, but yes. what the hell does kafod mean? No, we can, I I, you know what? Now I don't know if I used it right. So okay, like, well, you know what? Stick with nana nana boo boo. So anyway, they let him vote. Long story short, they let him vote, and that's that's that. Oh my! You know, yeah, underwear, that is a very real issue. I mean, your underwear is too tight. You know, so we were thinking that maybe some other that was the reason why some other people had issues with attendance. Yeah. Maybe then. Maybe we're, maybe we need an underwear. Uh, we know their underwear's in a knot. We know, you know that I, already. You know this so. is this is something Writing that, that most chafing. that most people don't understand. You know, I, I missed a lot of meetings uh, dating all the way back to 1988, and I, you were. I, I think I told you this. I would get a phone call from John Anaramy and the the then mayor, and every time the Chicago Bulls were playing in a playoff game. <laughs> I was at home in my lazy boy watching the Bulls play. With, the mayor, no, with no underwear. With no underwear, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and, and just real quick, Anna Raymond would say, Steve, we have a council meeting tonight. I don't imagine you're coming. I said, no, the Bulls are playing. Hey, we got a call. Good morning. You're on Kenosha today. Good morning, gentlemen. How's gentlemen? Your, hey. pa- Paul, is your underwear too tight today? <laughs> What's underwear? <laughs> okay. <laughs> what? Obviously, you've been hanging on our every word. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I think I think somebody stepped on your squirrel. It stopped streaming on the computer just now. A squirrel? A squirrel. Mm. Squirrel. This, squirrel. Whatever it? generates this computer stream, it's, it is cut out now, and I haven't, uh. for about the last five minutes, I haven't been able to hear you guys. Are oh. you in the 17th District? It's been the best 15 <laughs> minutes of the show, too. It's ter- <laughs> terrible. Dang it. <laughs> you mean to tell me they've cut power? Well, how can anybody stoop so low? And the guy's out there in the 17th going... Stevie, Casey, Barter, nan, nan, na, boo, boo. <laughs> Cuff- show you. Man. Hey, Paul, I got a question for you. What the hell does kafod mean? Kafod. Yeah. Pete, Pete just used laugh. the word I don't. It means laugh. Thank you. Kafod? I used it right. No, no, it's guffod. Kafod. G- uh, see, he doesn't even spell know. It for, spell it for me. I'm a master speller. I know how to spell everything. G U F F A W. G U F F F A W. Guffaw? Guffaw. Yeah, guffaw. <laughs> you know, it's, and you know, Paul, this is just my lot in life. I have to explain the words loud, I use to a co-host. Loud, boisterous laugh. <laughs> loud, boisterous laugh. Yeah, hey, Pete, that's what that's what Pete, happens. I got a question. Do you know yes. what this means? Na 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 boo boo. <laughs> oh, and, and, and while we're still being so serious, Steve, I just got to thank you so much for the generous contribution for the St. Baldrick's Foundation. Oh, that's not a problem. I told you I would do that last week. Yeah, I, I appreciate it. That's all right. When does that take place? Fill us in on that. March seventh, I think. I'm getting my head cut uh, on March 12th. That's after so, the event. Well, no, this is, I, I'm, I'm an independent, I'm a virtual shavy. I don't go do it at the event. I have a, my own personal cutter come and cut. Oh, hotsy totsy. Hoity doity, are we? Hoity doity. This is the third year I've done it, so. Where's this going to take place? Where? Yeah. In my uh, dining room. <laughs> Can you take a video of it? I'll take some photos. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. Why don't you come down to the boathouse and we'll uh, do it on the deck. Oh, yeah, there you go. Then somebody like the wizard might show up, and then we'd really be in trouble. Now, (laughs) if you're going to shave your head, when you're you're out there in the 17th District assisting with the snow removal, you're going to have to wear a warmer hat. Yeah. I will. I will. (laughs) Don't you have those uh, Kenosha Today stocking caps available now? Oh, they're on back order. Back That's right. <laughs> we've got no, but we've soon to have. We, we will soon have Kenosha today earmuffs and muzzles and underwear. Muzzles, muzzles. <laughs> I can't wait for the Kenosha today attendance tracker to come oh, out. That's yeah. really what we're looking forward to. All right, all right. Here we go. Nana, nana, boo, boo, Paul. This is exactly what it means. A phrase used to tease or taunt someone, typically used when pl- when being pursued in a chasing game, often 
followed by stick your head and doo doo. <laughs> na 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 boo boo. Stick your head and doo doo. That's some pretty healthy trash talking there, Mister. Wow, Casey. <laughs> really, <laughs> trash really? talking to a whole new my, level. My goodness. <laughs> hey Pete, do me a favor. Don't get the stream back up, okay? <laughs> 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 Doing the best you can. Okay, Paul, you got anything else? Okay, no, that's it. Thanks a lot. Guys. All right, Paul, we'll Paul. talk to you soon. I know. Yeah, I don't know what's up with the stream. I can't. Uh, let me read this quick sponsor okay. before I forget. For, uh, Alderman Bostrom, he wants to... Uh, yeah, let's talk about that. Yeah, uh, bring uh, five, <laughs> five citizens and add them to the uh, Public Safety and Welfare Committee. Yeah, can you say dead in the water? <laughs> well, what's wrong with the system we have now? Well, there's nothing wrong with the system, but, uh, you know, he, he, and, and I certainly can appreciate Alderman Bostrom, you know, wanting more public input. He's been unable to deliver just about anything to Southport <laughs> Park. <laughs> you know, he probably needs as much help as he can, but the real issue is this, um, you know, and, and this is not like a, like a watershed issue. This is not an issue like it's a cure for cancer or something like that. It's not an issue that's going to change anybody's lives. So... It's one of those tweener issues, you know, tweener. You, you could, some guys can say, yeah, we could probably do that. Some guys would say, no, we don't need to. But it's going to come down to deeper than this, okay? Because if it was a really, really, really important issue, everybody would support it because, yeah. you know, they're above all the pettiness and that. But if it's one of these tweener issues where, you know what, I don't really care. I think the system's working the way it is. And besides, I really don't like Steve Bostrom. <laughs> so they're going to vote against it. Well, it says, uh... I used to do it all the time. It says uh, the last two years, his claim is uh, the last two years, is the, basically ignored the will of the people, and this would force the commission as a whole to listen to public concerns. I think they call it aldermanic elections well, and, and, and in the, in the Kenosha News, there was an uh, a article, I think, two days ago about the, the striping in the, uh, in the parking lot that it was confusing to people. Well, y- you know what? Uh, Definition. <laughs> you, you threw me. Uh, so there's a striping issue in the entrance way to Southport Park. Well, you got to ask yourself at some point. You still don't have a new roof on Southport Park. There's been uh, the South, Southport Beach House. There's been nothing done at all. He said no to the dog park, the dog run, and now it's in the ninth district. Alderman Rosenberg and Przanski saw to that. Yeah. Wonderful improvement, very well received in the neighborhood, and now the striping in the parking lot. You got to think to yourself. Self? Yeah, self? <laughs> you got to think to yourself, self? Well, what kind of representation do we have? I told you guys we should have nuked it when we had a chance last summer. <laughs> we could have leveled that. Who let the dogs out? <laughs> we could have leveled that right there and there. Who let the dogs out? Forget well, I'm not, I'm not quite sure what kind of public input he needs on the Parks Commission. He needs to be a little more proactive and bringing some development down there. No, Nothing, they, nothing's happened down they, there in three years. Yeah, they want to use the more expensive uh, tiling on the roof, and there's some other things they want to do. It's to stack the, the commission. Oh, yeah. And that's that's really thing. what it is. Let's call it for what it is. It's to well, stack Well, like the I commission. said, it's dead in the water. He's not going to get any support so, at all. It's dead in the water. Enough about your boat. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> now, he wants to add five citizens. Anybody in mind? Can well, we name? got we got four in this room, <laughs> well, right there. Yeah, you're going to add five cents. I wonder if they have anybody in mind that they well, want to bring. Well, I, I don't know. I, you know, there's so many questions. There, there's more questions that arise out of this than than not. I mean, who appoints the citizens? You know, do they have to live in the in the district of? Uh, who knows? Who are they I mean, answerable to? Well, well that's they're exactly not elected, right. so no, who are they answerable? No, no, to? Well, it's no, like no. the ethics board. There's five of them there. Yeah, you appointed, elect appointed by the mayor, and now they don't like the way the ethics board's yeah. operating. Yeah. I mean, the Dude. bottom line is you you like 17 aldermen, which, by the way, I think are four too many. I've always said we've only needed uh, 13 aldermen right. for years. 13 aldermen, by the way, if I was ever in charge, you want to hear what I would do? I would eliminate, I <laughs> I would eliminate four <laughs> positions of aldermen, take it down to 13 aldermen, redistrict the city, and I would eliminate the mayor's job, make it a part-time job. Well, first of all, that has to be done by referendum, by state statute. Well, if it has to be done by referendum, <laughs> by state statute. You know what? All you do is you throw up obstacles. Well, I'm, so, you know, I'm just, a man of opportunity. You, you just throw you up obstacles. You can't just wave you know the what? magic wand. You, you, gotta... you know what? I know where you can find six, 7,000 signatures just laying around to get <laughs> yeah, that referendum. Yeah, 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 so don't worry yeah, yeah, about it. Right. Maybe I'll start a referendum to eliminate the mayor's job, make it a part-time job. If you recall, in the 50s, in the 50s, uh, yeah, you can, when Bosman's not there, you well, can come I, over and turn yeah, your there's yard. There's no and, question that you need a guy in charge, and that can be a part-time position. But yeah. any anybody who runs a small business who has a real job, how can they walk away from their small business or their job to say, look at, uh, you know, Mr. and Mrs. So-and-so, I'm going to 
uh, take some time off and run for mayor. And then if I'm elected, I need a leave of absence from my, you know, decent job uh, so that I can be the mayor for four years. No, you need to create a situation where anybody can run. But Make it a part-time job, 20 hours a week, 15 hours a in week. In the 50s, we had a city manager's form of government. We didn't have a mayor. Right. And then it went to a rough run because right. the unions wanted more say, and we ended up with a mayor or form of government. This is, this is what I envision the mayor being. He's the guy that comes in about once a week and says, okay, we're at point A. I want to get us to point B. You guys are the experts. You're the high-buck paid, paid people with the city. Get me to point B. I'll be back in a week, and you can update me. Come back in a week, they update him. He can still preside at council meetings. He can still do this and that, but we don't need a full-time mayor and a full-time city administrator. I don't believe we never have. But the problem is the mayor's elected position. A dog catcher could get elected, you know, mayor, but he may not have the skills to know everything there is about the city. Forward I mean, you need Casey. someone who's Forward highly... Forward, Casey. <laughs> We're taking, hanging on your every word here. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. sure you are. <laughs> Forward, I smell Casey. a platform. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, do you? Do you really? Like, yeah, a little like bit. Pete says, we got 6,000 signatures. Just well, we, we, we may get politically Dude, active out. again. I got, I got a guy that wants to run in a couple of districts, two guys. Uh, actually, a woman and a guy that are going to run. A, we've uh, I've targeted two different district races and... Uh, and I think they're going to be announcing shortly. That's a good thing. Well, that's not till 2016. 2016, but it's already uh, it's a year away. I need them to elect. I need them to announce sometime in the summer, August or September, be the first out of the blocks and campaign hard from now until to election. Is time. this why we have to play that disclaimer, Pete? Uh, I mean, pretty much so, something huh? like that. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of this last few minutes with Steve has been. Uh, we got it coming up on the eleven Dis- o'clock hour. We got to take. Has a it break been shortly. disclaimable information? <laughs> yeah, well, we're disclaimered. We're we're good to go. Um, some of the topics we'll talk about afterwards. You know, the Menominees they lost the casino, but in today's paper they want to. Uh, they're <laughs> trying to grow pot. Well, they want to grow marijuana and put strip joints out there. Oh, it didn't say strip joint. Oh, I, I'm sorry. That, that was <laughs> maybe I just added that. <laughs> I'm sorry. You all, you Is know. it just the marijuana? Either one. What's the difference? They're both right about the same. Well, nothing says, um, "Hey, governor, shove this" more than a, a rolling a fat one, a fat boy. Uh, we'll show them. Yeah, really. Uh, uh, well, I mean, let's talk about that article. They don't get their casino, so now they want to grow marijuana on the grounds. Well, what? Well, I don't know if they want to grow it there. Well, they want to grow it somewhere. Well, it would have to be on their reservation land. Oh. Like, we're not on. Well, not on Terry land. Do no. they still own that parcel? <clears throat> technically, well, they they paid for uh, their right to it for February. I don't know if they would continue forward. Um, <clears throat> just real quick, if they do file a lawsuit and they do pursue some kind of legal yeah. thing, I would imagine they would want to keep their rights over that land, just because if you're a judge and you say, okay, well, I I would like to look at your case, but if I overturn it you have no land to build the casino on so i would think that would undermine what you're trying to do hey visualize this you know that sign that says welcome to wisconsin when you cross in <laughs> wouldn't that be something with a, with a guy you can put one of those little pipe shops up there you know where you roll the papers or roll welcome to wisconsin roll your own <laughs> <laughs> look at denver yeah, yeah. yeah we'll be denver. the new we'll be the mile high capital of the midwest now you know peyton right, manning something. this is the great thing i'll tell i'll fill you in after the break we'll be right back uh, this is Uncle Scotty Barter, and welcome to the all-new Kenosha Today Weekly Report, coming to you live from Studio A here at WIP AM 1050 on your radio dial. Being brought to you this morning by the Boathouse Pub and Eatery, KC Family Options, and a host of many other very fine local businesses. In our Kenosha Today Trolley Barn this morning, spreading the love as only he can do. This year's MVP on Fat Tuesday, the big dog little Stevie Casey enlightens our little encounter group this morning. Why, good morning, Kenosha. Back for the second hour of... Nothing. <laughs> Along with the always lovable Ronnie or Captain Ronnie Muttersbach in the ever Just say Smith or Jones or something. There's <laughs> no way you can pronounce that right. <laughs> That's awesome. That's still Pete Surgeon. Hey, Pete, I was yes. listening to you do the weather, and I'm very pr- proud of you. Oh, well, thank you. How can you. Very nice. How can you do the weather and then be here? <clears throat> yeah, but Michael. Yeah, it's amazing. Right. Yeah. Enlighten us with the, what's wind chill values. I've never heard that. That's a, that's a National Weather Service term that when we get the uh, the script from them, they say wind chill values instead of just wind chills. And excuse me. I just, I just kind of read it verbatim. Excuse so. me if I don't guffaw. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> You do here. I read it verbatim. It do you get that one, Steve? Verbatim. You, yeah. I, I understand, you understand verbatim. That verbatim. Okay, good. <laughs> I'm sorry. I guffaw. <laughs> I guffaw. That's kind of what a guffaw is. <laughs> you know, like that. People yeah. criticize us for not bringing serious yeah, journalism <laughs> to the table. Yeah. Uh, obviously, everybody knows about Brian Williams. He's suspended for six months. What? Uh, but his daughter's defending him. Yeah, I saw that. For apparently, he made up. Uh, 
some well, but, experiences and some, well, not just one. There's a, now they're looking at all the things that he talked about that they all may be made up. Well, you know, when you get to that level, not like us. He was bored. Well, <laughs> not like us. I mean, we don't make a lot of stuff up. I mean, <laughs> but you know, Brian Williams. I don't are know. You, if you, are you kidding me? Oh, Every two-hour show, I I think I make up six or seven things. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but but we can do that. It's paid broadcasting, and I can say what I want to say. Well, you're Which, a, by the way, yes, yeah. talking about say what I want to say, mm-hmm. is this is the deal, okay? Mm-hmm. It was very clear to me that it was coffee, donuts, and the ability to talk about whatever I want to talk about. Okay. So I've been able to do that. Haven't had donuts for three weeks in a row. We're trying to look for your, and, for your and health. And again, have you been in the bathrooms, <laughs> into the men's room? <laughs> I'm afraid well, to touch yeah, anything. Um, listen, the the cleaning lady will be in later this afternoon, and I will let her know your uh, your concerns about the men's room, and uh, we'll pass it along. Come I mean, here. I think I was still I was still overwhelmed this week when Carl sent me that nice uh, nice check. Maybe that's to compensate for lack of donuts in a dirty bathroom. I don't know. You think those bathrooms are dirty? You would come bartered out. That makes that place look like the Taj Mahal. It's just they're just at the end of the cycle. They're clean <laughs> twice a week, but it's the end of the cycle. You know, it's the end of the yeah. cycle now. So and they we're need the, to be, they need we're to be the, cleaned again. End of the cycle, bottom of the barrel. So mm-hmm. we are we are the end of the cycle. We're right the end of the you are. You kind of are. Yeah. I'd like to think of it as a uh, bottom of the barrel. <laughs> I'm sorry. There I go. Guffaw again. Guffaw. Guffaw. <laughs> Whatever. You guys don't realize. You know that. <laughs> Brian Williams. He's trying to. You know, yeah, he, yeah, he yeah, tries to it. impress us I, with these big words. I'm not trying not to me. impress you. But sometimes he just comes off as being facetious. This was written ah. in, our, in our home office on the deck of the boathouse pub and read this morning's top ten category. You guys don't know this, but top ten stories Brian Williams told about being here in Kenosha. Ooh. He was here not too long ago. Really? Yes. Okay. These are the top ten stories Brian Williams told about being here in Kenosha. Number ten. I was riding on the trolley when suddenly we got hit with a grenade from a common sense terrorist. <laughs> common <laughs> sense terrorist? Yeah. Uh, this is Brian Williams talking. Well, about. there's 6,000 of them, you know. Six, yeah. <laughs> Number nine. I was the only one responsible for shoveling out one-inch snowstorm in the 17th district. Brian Williams said that. Well, no, he was, that was made up because we had a whole slew of volunteers yeah. out there. Number eight. It was me who actually filed frivolous ethics complaints against two wayward aldermen. Number seven. I stand by my letter boy, Pete. Not Join late at all. Time. Not late at all. <laughs> number seven, I stand by my claim to have picked up all the roadkill in Kenosha County. Number six, I made Lenny Palmer the radio legend that he is. <laughs> number five. Oh, he's a legend, all right. Yeah. Number five, did I tell you about the time I paid off Scott's Boathouse bar tab? About oh, time somebody he made He up. made that up. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> number four, I replaced the entire roof at the Southport Beach House with gold-plated tile. Number three. <laughs> I honestly saw a body floating in the harbor right after Governor Walker kicked the casino to the curb. <laughs> Number two, I now proclaim that little Stevie and Uncle Scotty to be the next serious journalist everybody can count on. We are serious journalists. And the number one story that Brian Williams told here in Kenosha, hey, I'm 65 years old and I don't have a photogenic memory. <laughs> All right, let's take some calls. Uh, give us a call. Two six two six nine four ten fifty. I got my cell phone. You want me to call in? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're looking for Donut Dave wherever he is because he owes us some donuts here. But we were just looking out for your. Oh, there is. Oh, okay. <laughs> this this may be Donut Dave texting us. I want to read a sponsor. A big thank you to the boathouse. Where the hell is your husband? I want my donuts at the radio <laughs> station. She texts me back. I'll send him if you promise to be our dock mate at the marina. We can have donuts all summer long. See, they're trying to lure us. I'm on a dock We're too with smart the sailboat. For that. We're too smart. For and they're that. trying to lure us over to their dock so that we can spend well, we, spend time with them. Pete, time. Pete and Ron and I were down there a couple times yeah. last summer. And, uh, well, which is pool. why be, because, <laughs> because you are allowed on their boat is one of the main reasons why I don't want to be next door to them. <laughs> Well, we had a heck of a time down there on, on what's his, oh, his boat's name's the Soulmate. Now, yes. Well, bring, bring yeah. I think he's buying a bigger boat, though. Wow. Yeah. Keeping yeah. the same wife? Oh, yeah, well, he better. She's a sweetheart. <laughs> yes. yeah, she's a sweetheart. And the name of your boat is the infamous Wind Dancer? We are the Wind Dancer. We are the Wind, wind Dancer. Wind yep. Dancer. Yep. <laughs> uh, can't wait. Hopefully it'll be a nice, uh, a better summer for boating and enjoying of the, the lakefront. You know, although don't, if you go to Southport, park don't anticipate any new development down in that area i told you you know i can get back on the phone and we can call in another airstrike we should have done it last summer when i had the chance we can nuke <laughs> that baby level it 
Well, and, just uh, a beautiful, I, I'd love to see Kenosha uh, invest more money, not just in the downtown and on the lakefront, but on the beaches. You know, I mean, when, when, we, were, when we were young, don't you remember the lifeguards and the lifeguard oh, yeah. stations? Oh, was and, this Galahadi? Oh, well, they had they had you know hot dog vendors down there. They had all kinds of vendors down there, and you know I'd like to see and 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 I hope this doesn't prompt a lot of phone calls. I don't really care. I was never a big fan of the swimming pools. I oh. thought it was a waste of money because the same fifteen hundred kids use the swimming pool time and time again. It doesn't bring in any new people. It's the same fifteen hundred kids. I'd like to see some of that money invested in some of the beaches and that we've got more beaches i think our community and, and i'm probably going to misspeak but we've got more beaches on our eastern uh, boundary that's where the lake than, is than a lot of other communities <laughs> our size there's that's, no question because the lake's out there right it's because the lake <laughs> that, there's the lake right there that's, scott that's there. you know steve just wanted to make sure everybody knows he doesn't have a photogenic <laughs> memory that came to the beaches so. yeah but some of the you know if you're going to invest money put it in the simmons island beach because that's clean and it's open, and they could. Uh, well, Eichelman Beach is a nice little beach, and also. Um, oh yeah, forgot about that. well, up by the Bandshell, that's a beautiful beach. But it goes all the way to Carthage. But College. that water's so cold. Well, it's so cold, but people don't. Um, the water does warm up, but people people don't necessarily go to the beach to swim, and kids can go up to their waist in water and play around and, and this and that and c- come back out of the. Kids are immune to the, the water's no colder than it was when we were kids. We used to swim in the lake all the time, for heaven's sake. Well, I almost froze some of my good parts, too, out there. Well, you've got no good parts. Oh, I, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. <laughs> Fuzzy memory. Uh, talking about your four-ounce filet. It was three after getting oh, out of the, yeah, the water. Disclaimer, yeah. Uh, another we say, speaking of meat, I, I would generally eat red meat four times a week, four or five times a week. I've had red meat once, and it was at the House of Gerhards last Saturday night. I've been eating so damn much turkey, I think I'm going to start to gobble. You know, turkey's good for you. Did you know that? Well, so I've been trying to tell you, I don't eat red meat uh, hardly at all. But there's a difference in our system. Well, yeah, you clearly don't eat it on Valentine's. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if it's less than a three-ounce morsel, it's not considered red meat. Last March, on the uh, small boat harbor, <laughs> right, right off the deck from the boathouse, Two guys. <laughs> I just, I, I almost spit my, I think I spit my coffee right on you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think. Is that what that is? <laughs> anyway. Boy, this really is a show about there's, nothing, there's, Pete. There's two guys ice, ice fishing, and they're about 10 feet from open water and about three feet of ice. And so what they do is they got two life preservers in the water and two on the, uh, on the ice. And the guy comes up and tells me that he was doing this in case they fell in. I said, well, you can come up here for six ninety five at the boathouse and have the <laughs> fish and the slaw and the potatoes. Uh, you know, my, my, my phone is blowing up here with texts. Okay, what's this now? Scott is lying to you. He hunts cougars all the time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean, Mr. Barter? Uh, cougars. What, what is a cougar at your age? Yeah, what is a cougar <laughs> at your age? That's what I want to know. Yeah. It's a what? gal with no teeth and a walker. <laughs> Brings her own x lax in there. What do I know? <laughs> Now, you know, uh, right away, you just go, you go ugly on us well, all the time. You brought the text up. You didn't I have keep to read getting that. The, I keep getting the text from all, you, you know, my phone blows that. up when I'm on the radio here. Say this, say this, say that. Good, because I got nothing. I'm glad they texted well, me. Well, I can see that. Another sponsor of Small. His wife now texts me saying, if you and Jennifer agree to come to our dock, we'll throw Scott and Pete What's off that? the list. <laughs> what about so her? they'd rather have us than you. Is what they're saying. Oh, she's just pretending. She's oh, just, no, she's not. No, she's, she's just serious. Being, she's talking about making stuff up. <laughs> and tell her to quit texting me at 12 o'clock at Listen, night. Listen, don't you people understand I'm in the middle of a show? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. Welcome to Sunnyside well, Club. Eagle heads, or not eagle heads, I'm going to talk about deer heads, you know, and, you know, they put up on the wall. The mounts. And the mounts, the mounts. That, yeah, we're, you can tell we're not hunters. Yeah, here we go. Gonna wait Jerry, for it. Nick! <laughs> wait, wait for it. Wait, here it comes. Wait for it. I understand they were going to put a big picture of you on, on the, the main dining <laughs> room Actually, they're, uh, they're participating in a big fundraiser at the end of uh, March for the Golden Strings, the group uh, that the strolling uh, orchestra group that plays at Tremper. My, my kids are both in that. Um, and uh, I'll get more information about that. Uh, I'm certainly going to enjoy dinner and listen to the Golden Strings. And I'm, I'm hoping to get there for dinner next Saturday because it's, uh, it's a very special day. Do you want me to check my calendar, see if I can make no, it? No, it's, uh, it's my birthday. Happy birthday. Oh, Do you want me to check my calendar and see if I can make it? <laughs> Do they bring it? I think that's a no. I think the guffaw means a no. Guffaw? Is that a guffaw? 
I, I do have another sponsor. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, as you know, there was glue gate in Kenosha for went on what seemed to be an eternity. You know, uh, allegedly one alderman putting allegedly uh, glue, super glue, in the car lock of another, and Same they've way. they've kind of uh, <laughs> resolved all that. But as a result of that, our brand new sponsor is Glue Be Gone. They are now a sponsor of the Kenosha Today Show. Tired of super glue ending up where it's not supposed to? Wondering how to remove it? Get glue be gone. It will remove unwanted super glue from any surface, car doors, car locks, any surface. <laughs> <laughs> you got more? Ever been in a parking <laughs> Ever been in a parking lot and dripped super glue on your black trench coat or worse yet on the leather seats of your Mercedes? Glue be gone can eliminate all evidence of handling super glue. It is compact and cannot be detected by irritating transit ca cameras. <laughs> Is this over? Get no, not yet. <laughs> Get glue be gone for all your covert super glue missions. Be assured, no one will suspect a thing. There will be no trace of you, even handling the super glue. Why risk sticky fingers at city council committee meetings? Call blue, glue be gone today, or visit them at online at www.nomorestickyfingers.com. Thank glue God, a caller in just in the nick of time. <laughs> just in the nick of time. Good morning, on Kenosha today. Hey, boys, uh, first-time caller, long-time listener. Thanks for taking my call. More importantly, I want to pick up that uh, glue be gone. So tell me where I can pick it up at Steve. any store soon. <laughs> Steve, we're going to get this. <laughs> well, you'll have to hey. visit them online. They'll be opening retail. There's a couple of vacant stores in the downtown area, and uh, they're going to be opening up a retail establishment in downtown Kenosha. Hey, I, you know, I did listen to you guys, and, you know, I'm not very uh, – I don't get the alderman thing, so maybe you can explain this and dumb this down a little bit. So are these <laughs> talking about alderman and dumbing down, that's, you came to the right place. <laughs> Go ahead. Are, are we talking about the aldermen that are in this for themselves or the aldermen that are in this for the community? <laughs> so, I mean, do you see a big difference? I mean, because, I mean, oh, you know, my goodness. from the outside it, looking in, I, I absolutely do. Yeah, there's, there, there, are, there are a handful of aldermen, in my opinion, I'm going to clarify that, in my opinion, that are in it for themselves. And there are a whole bunch of aldermen down there whose heart is in the right place, and they act in the best interest of the city. But there's a, a handful of them, primarily three of them. There used to be seven or eight of them, but the city, uh, uh, the city taxpayers voted a lot of them out of office. You know, so there's still two or three down there who just do not. They're they're obstructionists. You know, and you know exactly what I'm talking about. Aren't you glad so you called? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I actually, I actually I am. Uh, okay. Um, more importantly, so what benefit is it for them if they are in it for themselves? Eagle. It can't be the money. Yeah, there's. there's no money in it. Uh, I mean, we can talk about this uh, this for hours. Um, we only got. <laughs> I just I just think that they operate with their own agenda and they don't operate in the best interest of all of the taxpayers. We'll just we can leave it at that. Did you gain anything out of this by calling us? Yeah, you're gonna, absolutely, I did. Gonna, now, who's? Let me ask you a question. Whose district do you live in? Do you live in Kenosha? You know what? I have no clue. Well, I'll tell you. Where do you live? Where do you live? <laughs> I live on 27th Street. 27th Street and, and 15th. And 15th. That'd be the north side. That's yeah, Rocco be, Lamacchia, I think. Uh, that could be Rocco he, Lamacchia. He's my, oh, he's my a good guy. He's I my older by his son. Yeah, Rocco is a great guy. He's he's one of the good guys. Does does what he's supposed to do, attends all the meetings. Now, you'll verify this report that in our district, our streets are down to the bare pavement, the grass is showing, and people are out barbecuing this afternoon. In fact, yeah, you've probably got green grass at your property because yeah, right. Rocco removes the snow so well. Yeah. <laughs> I see him walking down the street in snow boots and uh, Eskimo shoes with the dog. Absolutely. He's handling, he's, he's handling business. <laughs> but uh, like I said, I dig you guys. Pete, keep doing a great job over there. and uh, Pete! Guys, you guys. <laughs> did, 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 you know, you know, there's Steve and Scott are here too. Yeah, yeah hello. Yeah, well, well uh, you know, I had to I, teach my guys, so I had to, I have to throw a shout out. Well, yeah, thank, but, thank okay. you, Brad. I here's, here's a that. big, hey guys, you guys be good. All right, All right, thank you. Here's a big, big kafaw <laughs> for Pete. <laughs> yeah, I got a Am I pronouncing that right? Kafaw. Kafaw. I gotta, See, you learned a new word today. Don't you feel yeah, better? Yeah, that now? I'll never, ever use <laughs> ever. <laughs> Well, if a guy comes in to pre-plan his funeral, you can just say, hey, do you want this guy kafod or what? <laughs> uh, I still don't think Scott really <laughs> understands it. You know, Scott, can we pull up the definition again on the teleprompter? <laughs> I wasn't paying attention. Good, uh, thing, there's a a good thing there's a teleprompter in here. Mm -hmm. i got to say. For a long time that they have some of the best hamburgers in the area. Yeah. I think what we ought to do is, and, and Pete, tell me if I'm, uh, 
if, if this can happen. Okay. What if we did um, live broadcasts? You know, we, we get five or six different businesses in Kenosha to uh, challenge, you know, and because and, we would be in search of the best hamburger mm. or the best cheeseburger in Kenosha. Anybody in mind who might be tasting these? Well, exactly. exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. I mean, we could broadcast live from the Sunnyside Club, the Boathouse, you know, whatever our sponsors are. What a guy I mean, I, I'm sure Dick, Dick Rudin at, at Gerhard's would make a hell of a if, cheeseburger. If, if I get fed out of the deal, Steve, we will facilitate it somehow. <laughs> yeah. Good morning. I think that'd be a great idea. Good morning on Kenosha Today. I uh, hear there's talk about free food, so I figured I'd call in. Oh, Wicklin. <laughs> All dressed up again, are you? <laughs> you know, when he's out shoveling. If it results in free food, certainly. Yeah, Kurt, Kurt, when you're out mm. shoveling snow in that white suit, nobody can see you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I heard you wore a hot three-piece uh, suit on Valentine's Day. You're still... You're so looking for hints, what's coming up, but I'm not gonna not gonna tip my hand. No, Valentine's Day was last too week. Sexy for my love. Was it? Too sexy. For oh, that's my right. That was the uh, that was right. here we go. known as the day here, of the here we, go. here we go, Kurt. Here we go. Hang with us. Hang with us, big boy. Hang with us. Wait for it, wait, wait for, for it. it. Wait for it. <laughs> I didn't have a lot of chance to cue this up. Yeah. So. <laughs> Hang on. Well, Hang on. Wait style. for it. Here we'll it comes, here it yeah. comes. Here it comes. Aren't you glad you called now? <laughs> and I, I love it. All right, all right. And, and to the previous caller who was asking who the good guys were and who the bad guys, this is Alderman Kurt Wicklin. Truly, in my opinion, of course, just one of the good guys. So, Well, thanks, Steve. Appreciate that. I, I, I wanted to call it and uh, head off Scott here because I missed my first... Uh, meeting since my election this, this Thursday wasn't able to attend the uh, city planning commission. I just don't want to get in any trouble. Were you were uh, you in Tennessee? I was I was heading down to Tennessee. Yeah, good, was good for Tennessee. you. Yep, yeah. yep, yep. And again, my sympathy to you. Uh, Kurt lost a good friend of his. This but you got, an, you got an excuse, right? Oh, uh, yeah. Well, I, my, my uh, neighbor and friend, uh, he passed away last week. We had a, uh, he was, oh, oh, his okay. family lives down in Tennessee, so we we, we buried him. Well, uh, if you need a need an, a written excuse from a funeral director, I'm there for you. Yeah. Oh, okay. Thanks very much. <laughs> but uh, we have a purpose in life. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. Try to act like you're serious, Kurt. We got to take yeah. another call. All righty. Just, All right. uh, just wanted to make sure I did get in trouble for okay. that, that meeting. You're on the good Take side. Care, guys. You're on the good side. We All promise right. we will not file an ethics complaint against you. Oh, now the caller left. He's gone. Oh. No, go ahead. Oh, oh no. good morning, Hunt Kenosha today. Well, I wasn't going to call in, but you're talking about hamburgers. This is Scott. How are you? Okay. Um, hey, listen, I had a burger this week at the garage, which is on the corner of 30th and 60th. You know what? I heard and the I'm same thing, Scott. I'll tell you. I mean, you go in there, they give you a piece of paper, and you custom build your burger. Where? And it was, it was real good. It really was. And there's so many good burgers in this town, but you got to put that one on the list. They got that idea from me over at Barter Manor. That's how we it, do it. Is that right? Yeah. Two, okay. three, or six <laughs> ounce, man. Well, Scott, give me. So, so you had a great hamburger at the new place. It's called the Garage on 60th and, uh, and 30th Avenue. Yeah, would you really would, was. would would you rate that up there with one of the best burgers in the area? I would put it on the list. I would put it in the competition for sure. I would enter them. Well, we're yeah. going to give this a little thought, and we may we may need a panel of judges. You know, oh, and I can't think of a you know, better judge than a guy like you and Kurt Wicklund. I've been buckets to be a grill games judge for years, and they keep shunning me. I don't know why, but uh, yeah, I would definitely uh, get involved in that. that now the bill list. the bill for the free advertising that you just came. Where do we send that to you directly? <laughs> uh, yeah, those that are taping, it's spelled G O R D O N. Uh, for anybody that's taping. Hey, while I'm on, can I can I do another shameless plug for our great dream? You got to make it really quick. You got to make it quick. Real quick. Hey, twenty thousand dollars raised this week. Ten thousand for festivals. Ten thousand for the Western Kiwanis. and the all you can eat spaghetti dinner. A dollar a ticket at the Kenosha Achievement Center on March fifth. It's a Thursday. Dollar in advance. Five dollars at the door. Um, anybody wants tickets, they can get a hold of me. I've got a pocket full. I love to sell them to you. That the project is on a absolute roll right now. Uh, money coming in, planning, building, ordering equipment. First two pieces of accessible play equipment were delivered this week to the city. So things are moving right. forward at one hundred and ten percent. 
All and, right. Uh, everybody, keep it up. We got All a right. great thing going here. So we'll talk next week right. with some more information. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Scott. Keep up the good work. I got Thanks, one more guys. sponsor, then we got to take. Spanning the globe to bring you the constant variety of sport, the thrill of victory, and the agony of defeat. Human drama, the agony of defeat. <laughs> the human drama of athletic competition. And the egg in your defeat. Just another day in the life and times of Barter Manor. Uh, if you just arrived here on the trolley, this is the Kenosha Today. <laughs> is this on? <laughs> is to you this live on? Here at WIP AM 1050, brought to you by the Boathouse Pumpkin Eatery. Casey Family Options and a host of other very fine. Uh, Maybe if I leave the queue out like this, and then he'll he'll talk. Uh, and just, coming out of that I, break. Did you hear what I asked him during the break? <clears throat> He's sitting there over there deep in thought. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I look at him. I and I like, what are you do, What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? And he takes his ear, 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 ear his yeah. headset off. He says, "Well, I'm concentrating for the next <laughs> half an hour. Concentrating. Let me read this. Concentrating. Last. We could do this in our sleep. And most times we have. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Or Hello. the stupor. At least. Is this on? Is it? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Somebody leave a wake up call here. Coming up on March seventh, uh, they're having this uh, Raiden's cancer battle. He's a little three year old boy diagnosed with stage four. Uh, here's a <clears throat> neuroplastoma. No blood. Neuro. It's it's a bad illness. Neuro. Yeah. You know, yeah okay, whatever. Anyway, and they're having a big a fundraiser for him on March seventh. Kenosha VFW from one to t- uh, ten. Tickets are ten dollars, and they're going to have some music and uh, everybody can get over to VFW. <clears throat> Where's it? That's on uh, sixty sixty uh, seventh Street and 39th Avenue. You know, I got to tell you, I love attending fundraisers like that, but it just breaks your heart. It really Especially does. When it's, uh, I don't care what age it is, but three. And yeah, this was like just, little Charlie uh, Vandenberg yeah. when he uh, <clears throat> lost his battle at uh, age yep. uh, five. Hey, uh, coming up this week, it started this weekend. The uh, uh, Melvin Gordon and Trey Waynes are heading for their uh, NFL Combine. And are you participating? I'm participating. Oh. I'm participating in the NFL Combine. Yes. I heard that the uh, the scouts they were going to try to time you in the forty yard dash, right? And so this, this guy brings right. a big hourglass, <laughs> a sundial. Brought a case Listen, of I, for a large man, I'm quicker than you'd think. How so? How so? Are you still talking to me? Yeah, I've got oh, question. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Speaking of sports, hmm. sports night at Holy Rosary, of course, was uh, was that last weekend or weekend before? Last week, uh, two weeks. I think. Was it two weeks ago? Yeah, Tony Tony Galici is the chairman of Sports Night. That's a great. He's event. been doing that for uh, I think over twenty years. Congratulations to him. I think they serve close to five hundred uh, meals, and of course they honored uh, the the great uh, area area athletes. I didn't make that cut when I was in high school. It surprises <laughs> you how? Did I, did I, did I, did I did, here's you were a, in the play in the Prince in the in the. What's that? Wedding. The, uh, wedding, the, 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 the one with the mattress. Once upon a mattress, yeah, yeah, princess yeah, yeah. and the pea. Yeah. So I was very theatrical. <laughs> I was in all the theatrical okay. performances. And we were short when Romeo, we did, Romeo. I think when we did Scott Man Valentine's of La Mancha. I, I, I'm in the middle. The Hello, I'm in the middle of a story. <laughs> I'm, I'm talking to Ron. I, I, I understand that. <laughs> <laughs> so Man of La Mancha, I, I get all of anyway, the. Anyway, uh, what I was trying to tell you. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, Go ahead. All right. Just, I can't remember whether it was Bye Bye Birdie or Man of La Mancha that we were short choir people. So I we, we enticed a lot of the football players to try out for uh, the chorus for this musical. And, of course, they all made it. So we made them all dancers in the chorus. And the deal was if they tried out for the chorus, that I would try out for the football team my <laughs> senior year. And I showed up for tryouts and... After about 20 minutes, Coach Matrice takes me aside and says, okay, you fulfilled your obligation. Get out. <laughs> so, But they already had a tackling dummy, so there, there was yeah. no need for you to be yeah. on the team. I didn't make the team, <clears throat> needless to say. You know, there's this, this is, oh, we get a call here. Good morning, you're on Kenosha Today. I thought, I thought I'd uh, call when there wasn't much being said on the show. Kind of a low. <laughs> so right, anytime now, between 10, 10 and noon, noon. yeah. <laughs> okay, your wife just texted me and said that if I agree to me, move my sailboat over to your dock, that you'll never have Ron, Pete, and Scott ever down to your boat. Really? Huh. News to me. Is this the woman you love? Yeah. Well, you better straighten her out. Who runs? Who wants the pants in your family, anyway? <laughs> Where the hell are my donuts? Oh, you know, I got a call from your doctor, and he said, do me a favor, and then don't bring any donuts over there to that Ex- oh, Excuse yeah. me, donut, uh, Dave. Be okay. Excuse me, donut, Dave, but there's three others here that we aren't sick. 
Oh, you're sick, all right. You're sick, all right. You just haven't been diagnosed. <laughs> you think you think I could put a bag of donuts on that counter of just the three of you to eat them and not him? You know what? Uh, and not him. Got a good that, point. And not him. Kafaw. Here's a here's a big kafaw right. to you. Na 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 boo boo. <laughs> he told Stick you. your head in doo doo. <laughs> oh, it is nice to hear you back, Steve. It, well, it, it's good it, to be it, back. It, you know, make your head grow any bigger. But yeah. it is nice. To hey, hear you hey back last year when you had Pete and Ron and I down on your boat the, uh, for the big party, um, you're going to do that again? Is that an annual event? Oh, that yeah. You didn't mark that down on the calendar. Yeah, just give us the date. You know, go accordingly. And uh, you want me to bring the the steaks this time? No. Uh, no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, that's well. Yeah, we could use some appetizers. So yeah, that's good. Okay, I'm gonna make you. I'm gonna make you a gentleman's bet. We've never firmed this up in the years in the past, but I'm gonna make you a gentleman's bet right now, gentlemen. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. The wind dancer will be in the water before soulmate. You well, lost. Soulmate's already in the know. water. I so- don't know if I could make that bet because I don't know if the soulmate's going in this year or not. Are you buying a bigger boat? Well, let's just say we're looking at a different boat. But hey, how does that work? When you, you know what, wh- you where it? do you guys get that kind of money? Donuts. 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 A, a don- donuts. Selling donuts is is that profitable? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, what happens to when you yeah. retire but, that old boat? It, it gives what, you a lot of business too. Well, <laughs> hey, when you retire the old boat, can you take? This is a serious question. If there is such a thing, can you take the name Soulmate and put it to a new boat, or is this some no? You have thing? to. I hope you wouldn't do that, Dave. You understand that's a. Uh, you don't really want to do that. You don't want to rename a boat. Never, never. Oh. You, you have to go through a, a maritime uh, ritual. You can purge a boat of its name. Purge? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a, it's a, a, a mm. go, go online. How do you change the name of a, a boat? A big words on the show yeah. today. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> hey, Kenosha Today's open. You can take that and put that on the back of your new go boat. Dave. Yeah. That, <laughs> my wife would love that one. I'll have her send you a text. I was, <laughs> yeah. Because I wouldn't be able to say it on the air, probably. What well, you would think about that? Well, I'm gonna. I'm, I still want a gentleman's bet that my, regardless of what boat you own, my boat will be in the water before yours. You're on. Okay. What are we gonna bet? What are we gonna bet? It's not gonna be dinner at Scott's house. No. <laughs> <laughs> how about dinner? How about dinner? A uh, dinner and drinks on the dock. Whoever's dock, you know, whoever loses, the other right. makes dinner and drinks. Or we could, or we could go to one of the sponsors too. Well, that's true. We could do that. Okay, how about dinner? That would be a better idea. I'd love to have dinner with your wife. Pete. Okay. I've had dinner with her before. (laughs) And by the way, tell her to quit texting me at midnight. And by the way, you're out of vodka. Whoever (laughs) wins. Okay. Whoever wins will pick pick a sponsor from the show. Okay. Okay. Whoever wins buys. Whoever wins the bet. Then the then they 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 pick where dinner is. They pick where, and, and then loser has to. And buy the loser there. buys. Okay, hey. but it's got to be one of our sponsors. Yes. You know, I hate to break this to you, boys, but gambling is illegal in the state of Wisconsin. Here, <laughs> we don't want to be breaking no rules and have the cops come and cuff us. Haven't you ever been down to the Southport Marina? There's slot machines down there. That's yeah. <laughs> well, I think we have to. Don't we have to get the governor's approval? Governor, what do what do you think? Hell no, you can't. I guess not. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I guess not. That's not happening. You guys want to try something else? <laughs> no, that this will work. This is just a gentleman's bet, you know. Gentleman. Oh, okay. a gen- yeah. Well, um, yeah. Does that mean we have to? <laughs> this is a gentleman's <laughs> bet. <laughs> Maybe we should rephrase that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, da- okay. da- Dave and I, Donut Dave and I have a lot in common. We both married out of our league. Yes. Yes. Yeah. What are you admitting to that for? <laughs> you know. You know. Uh, one thing I have to say to Steve, how can you keep begging me, uh, begging me for for my product, but I never call you and beg you for your service? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's from beyond the arc, Dave. That's well, you that's know, all net, man. That's good. It's funny when I used to be on the city council, I used to offer cremations two for one <laughs> for for any two aldermen down there. <laughs> Problem is that it had to take place that day. <laughs> the offer's still up, I'm sure. All right? Are you all right? Is your wife in the room when you're calling this, or are you out in, in a closet? I'm, at, I'm in a closet. That's figured. Well, come out of the yeah. closet. <laughs> well, your your wife is begging us to, to switch docks. But, you know, you guys are on that hoity-toity dock, you know. It's not hoity-toity. There's a lot of big boats over there. 
you know, I, I've got a nice boat, but it's 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 modest. Is hoity-toity a nautical term? I'm not familiar na- with that. Yeah, na- <laughs> just like nana nana boo boo. Yeah, this, this show is just full of the, full yeah. of big words that nobody knows what they mean. <laughs> Are oh. you being caustic with me? <laughs> <laughs> That's my favorite word, Dave, right. caustic. We, we try to bring some form of uh, a wealth of knowledge to listeners like you who are, have been leading a sheltered life and try to maybe you know, learn do, something today. He's doing something that's right. That's he's selling a lot of donuts. It. He's have, buying a bigger boat. Going, I have to get going because I have to look up all these words because it's driving me crazy. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thanks for the call. Right. Yep. Talk to you. Gosh. And, of course, is donut, donut List Dave. That's what we could call him, donut List Dave. <laughs> Hey, I got a, I got some of these. You know, it's not only is the NFL Combine; it's they have some. Uh, it's the big re- recruiting for Division One football. And here's some guys that uh, they're looking at from around. The, this one was from Wisconsin. The guy's name is. That's why I make the big bucks. <laughs> this guy's name is uh, Wayfron Doofus Walker. He's from Wisconsin. He's six foot six, two fifteen, wide receiver, hottest prox- prospect coming out of Wisconsin in the last ten years. He loves rap music. He's going to remain uh, demand a mini, mini cassette. Currently holds the world record for the most you knows during an interview. Uh, Wayfron can print his name uh, and sign. He signs with the Menominee Nation. What the hell are you talking hell about? You <laughs> All right, let's take a call here. <laughs> See, you got to focus. I told you to focus. Good morning, you're on Kenosha today. Good morning, Mike Bjorn. How are you guys doing? All right. Hey, Mike, how are you? I'm good. Hey, I was in Waukegan earlier in the week. All the snow is off the curbs, including the side streets in the Central Business District. As I came, as I came through Zion, same thing there. And I'll bet you if I went up to Racine, same thing there. Now, those cities are practically broke tax base-wise. How is it they can still do snow removal? Well, you explain it to us. I, I don't know. I'm just throwing it out. Somebody must know. And by the way, speaking of ice and snow, uh, we had some uh, of the sculpture wolves out last night, and they knocked over one of the sculptures by Jockey, Trolley Dogs, and, and the ice cream parlor. Really? Yeah. Well, you know, people get oh, bored boy. and everything. What kind of, <laughs> why, what would they, kind of, why would they do that, Mike? That? Because some people are idiots. You know, it's that simple. Well, where's and, the and security? That's one, that's one of the reasons that some of us choose to put things that are year around attractions inside our buildings because unfortunately there's a certain element that gets their jollies from being vandals hey mike you remember growing up uh, you're a little bit older than i am but just a little just a little y- you remember growing up and and probably not even having to lock your doors oh, at absolutely home. man absolutely I, I don't think our back door at 73 13 28th avenue had even a lock yeah. but you know what and my neighbors the same way and you know why i never went into my neighbor's house Without being asked, because it wasn't my house. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You know, why would I go into their house? And, and remember this too, uh, as far as how hard we partied and everything. And if you, if you did get a little blown away, uh, a police officer would ask you, "Now, where do you live?" Okay, you drive home careful. Now, w- what a different world it is. And if, and of yeah. course, I'm for strict enforcement. All right, but it's just amazing. It was so loose back then that when I graduated from Parkside, I had an all night party, and at the time, I was driving a TR6. Sports car. It was, you know, I had the top down, and at let's say four thirty in the morning, I had a friend take super eight sound movies of me driving my car around the Washington Bowl bike track. Oh now, my! That was a no, no. Okay, I, I I agree, but you got to remember, I've been partying, celebrating, graduating from college, and to be honest with you, I almost hoped I was going to get caught because I thought I might make the paper. That is uh, my. But that's how loose things were. Exactly, and that's a celebration that Scott uh, Barter has never uh, been able to enjoy. <laughs> Speaking of loose, my little, my <laughs> thanks, little, my little spies wow. in the area are telling me that there's rumors starting to float that the $11 million trolley extension might be cruising toward $13 million already, and it might go higher than that, I suspect. Well, you know what happens when the engineering study it poses I a know, very good man. question. Let's say the engineering study comes and they say, well, we need another $2 million. So it these, might be a lot more than two. Well, then let's suppose that we'll just use two. What's a couple million amongst friends? Yeah, right, right, All right, right. So the city council only voted for this. Does, right. Does, and if this comes out more, are they going to say, hey, we've got 86? Yeah, this, this issue, this could uh, be Mike. very interesting. Mike, I have been told the, the same thing. Uh, I believe that this issue will be brought up again, and oh, there'll yeah. be time to discuss it again. Yeah, 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 exactly. Oh, and by the way, uh, 
the restaurateurs, I, I think they're doing fine in everything as far as the promotion uh, to help the restaurants. But I would suggest, in my humble opinion, that when Valentine's falls on a Saturday, do the restaurant thing one week later. I assure you, in a climate like this, when Valentine's falls on a Saturday, the, the restauranters don't need to be giving away product and what have you. They do very well just because of the nature of the business. Now, the week after Valentine's, then hit it heavy because then it's typical February. Good luck, Charlie. So you're suggesting that instead of having a girlfriend over on Valentine's night, I should have her over on like Wednesday or Tuesday? You prepared for Pam, you devil. <laughs> 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 Not her real name. <laughs> uh, what can I tell you? What can I tell you? All right. Okay, guys. You have fun. All right. Thanks. Yep. Bye-bye. Uh, Mike Bjorn, mayor of uh, downtown, downtown Kenosha Kenosha. and uh, always a big supporter. I've always been a big supporter of downtown. Kind of torn on the snow removal thing, but we'll, well have to, we'll he's have right, to see. They've they, they removed, and like I said last week or the week before, uh, the downtown merchants are not trying to get out of the responsibility that they have to shovel in front of their, their establishments. But they just were to, we don't know where can put it, and there's no place to put it. So maybe this guy, caller, can tell us where to shove it or put it. <laughs> Good morning, you're on Kenosha today. Morning. Morning. How's it going? Oh, well, fine. Who's this? John. Okay, John, what's up? Well, I just want to echo what Mike Bjorn just said. I, I called a couple of weeks ago about it. I was downtown, and the snow was, you know, piled high and so forth. And uh, I was downtown again this morning, and... Nothing's been done, and I just can't figure out why they just don't put up a couple signs with some sticks, pink signs, no parking, police order. Get a darn work release crew from the House of Corrections or Collections and clean that stuff up. I don't get it. Well, that's how they used to do it. You know, they, they could do it during the day, one block at a time. They uh, ban parking for, like, say, in 6th Avenue for a block. Clean it up and then move to the next block. They didn't have to do it at night with um, overtime. overtime, and that's the way to do it. That's what everybody else is doing. So well, I guess I, I guess now, now there's a special assessment that goes on in the downtown area the for bid. the lake, lakes. Uh, downtown bid. Downtown bid. Yeah. Uh, are they able to take some of those dollars and uh, remove the snow in front of those businesses? They can do whatever they want with those bid dollars, but they plant flowers, uh, have these nice bouquet of flowers up and down 6th Avenue, and then, then they don't even go up to the, up to the north uh, well, why don't downtown. you be a little creative with that, with those uh, that special assessment, and approach the city like this caller is saying, and say, "Look at, you know, we'll pay a third of it, and the and the city pays two thirds of it." Good you idea. Know, because there's going to be a cost. I'm not sure what kind of cost there is to remove all that snow in in the downtown area. Well, if these guys are being paid uh, by the hour, they're already on the on the dime. So what's the, what's the problem? They're, what are they doing now? Just doing nothing. Well, what you know what? I, you know, I quickly because I, I times are wasting, but. Last night I was out also, and they were plowing and salting and so forth. I mean, they could take that time, that salt, and that money and, and, and put it down there. But yeah. I guess it's a problem that's going to never be solved. I mean, they were able to do it 30 years ago again, you know. We've progressed so far well, now we can't solve this simple problem. <laughs> well, 30 years ago they used to take the garbage out of your backyard, for heaven's sakes. Remember that? Where they'd oh, yeah. walk right into the backyard and, and empty your garbage cans? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was pro it maybe uh, that's what we ought to revert back to the 30-year plan. Instead of having a 10-year plan forward, maybe we ought to plan backwards. That's a very yeah, good point. Works. You've called the right place. Okay, have a great day. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> Thanks John. That, really. You know, the, I mean, it, this, is a, this is a unique situation, and it's, a, it's one of those tweener things because, you know, you'd like to be able to say that uh, I understand all of the the business owners remove their snow and they pile it up in the parkway. And now, how do people get to the businesses? There's no place to put the snow, supposedly. Okay, so w what if the city said, you know what? Next weekend or next Thursday and Friday, we're going to remove all the snow from the parkways or from the curb lines down there, which will probably create a couple of extra parking spaces every block or so yeah. because the snow is, is so so steep down there. But what about the other businesses? What about the businesses in the uptown? Have you driven through the uptown lately? There's snow. There's snow packed on those in, in, bump outs. But and taking up all the parking spot. It's not you have to park next to the pile of snow. You literally lose the whole spot because right. the pile is in the yeah. middle right. of it. Well, you know? I mean, what's going to stop the city from going into the uptown area? Is or what about? There's another corridor of Roosevelt Road from 22nd Avenue to 39th. There's a lot of small businesses in that area. What about the business that I run? Is the city going to come? I've got a pile of snow in front of the planning center because that's where my snow plow 
pushes it, and it's 10 feet high already. You know? Okay. <laughs> okay, that's it. What the hell, you know, that's it. I'm out of here. See you later. I'm done. If I'd have known that, I would have said that two hours ago. Good morning, you're on Kenosha today. Hey, I got a good idea. Okay. Why not take the uh, waste department guys? They get off at noon, but they get paid for a full day's of work. Why don't you have them down there doing it? How does that happen? Oh boy, that's a that's a sore subject with a lot of other city employees. You're absolutely right. How does it, a lot of waste employees are done by noon, but they're paid for eight hours. You're right. Well, well that was a contract negotiated back on John Anuranium, right? Yeah. If there you go. Turn yeah. that around and get these guys working. That's ridiculous. Well, I got to tell you, I've I've never been in a job where I can take off at noon, get but 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 get paid for a full day. That's right. Yeah. And if they're sitting around doing nothing, we're paying them. Why not get them down there and move that snow? Why not have them doing some other stuff? Yeah, I hear you. Good that's, point. That's good a point. very good point. Good you, point. Well, you, thank you very much. Now, okay. talk to you here. We should have to probably do something well, official. It's, it's what do you mean official? Well, these, these are good points. We have to take the well, next yeah. step. I mean, we're not going to just sit well, but, on our laurels. Yeah. Can you understand how other small businesses in different parts of the city are going to say, "Why are you removing the snow in downtown? Why don't you come by and re- remove my snow?" Well, then why are we doing all? Let's just take the downtown. Why are we doing all of this to promote the downtown with these uh, ice sculptures and that and that if we can't remove the snow and have a parking? Yeah, no, I understand completely, but it's a, and and I'm 100% behind downtown businesses. You know that. I love downtown. Okay. Okay. Yeah. (laughs) Good morning. You're on Kenosha today. This is uh, Eric from Pleasant Prairie. Okay, Eric. And a friend of Mike Bjorn's, and, you know, I'd... If he needs help, I can go down. I, I use a cane right now, but I can go down and help him shovel if he wants. But Well, he probably does. <laughs> <laughs> but I was just going to mention, you know, just, uh, you, know, I, you know, I've been associated with the uh, casino project. And uh, just an unintended consequence mm. of what the walker's done. Right now, that property out there gets the city about, Two hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year in taxes. Um, it was up to about four hundred thousand dollars in taxes. The city would have gotten eight million dollars a year from that property. The city, county would have gotten another four million dollars, and so that eight million dollars could have fixed a lot of potholes in the city. Could have gotten a downtown shovel. Could have done a lot of things, but. You know, just an unintended consequence as to what's going on here, and it, it's just sad, you know. Eric, <laughs> Eric what are we going to do with the thing now, with that property? Uh, I think I think it's going to sit for quite a while. You know, mm. it's going to take it's going to take about ten, eleven million dollars to tear that thing down and get it into shape for anything else. So it, it's pretty difficult, you know, right now to sit there and say, hey, let's let's get rid of this thing when somebody's got to come in and spend a lot of money just to get it in shape. That's why up in uh, Hudson, Wisconsin, that, that thing th- is still sitting there. And Delavan, I think, is still sitting there. On a prime piece of property on Highway 43 and 50, and it's sitting there because the cost of tearing it